the megafaunal extinctions. The dominant theory is the, the overkill hypothesis or the idea that human hunters exterminated them. I've gone into the literature pretty extensively to try to find out how many people were actually present on the planet at the end of the last ice age. Even conservatively, there was probably a woolly mammoth for, for every human, right? When you look at a mammoth, I mean, that's going to be one of the most dangerous, difficult to take down animals out of the whole Pleistocene bestiary. Antarctica, now a frigid and largely inhospitable land, was not always the icy continent we know today. In prehistoric times, it was home to a variety of animals, including dinosaurs, marine reptiles, and early mammals. Fossils discovered in Antarctica provide a fascinating window into its past ecosystems. Cryolophosaurus is one of the most well-known dinosaurs from Antarctica. This theropod dinosaur lived during the early Jurassic, about 190 million years ago. Measuring around 6 to 8 meters in length, Cryolophosaurus was a carnivore, distinctive for the unique crest on its head, which resembles an Elvis Presley hairstyle, earning it the nickname Elvisaurus. Another notable dinosaur from the same period is Glacialisaurus, this large herbivorous dinosaur belonged to the sauropodomorph group and was also about 6 to 8 meters long. It likely fed on the abundant vegetation of the time. The discovery of Glacialosaurus in Antarctica helps paleontologists understand the distribution of early sauropodomorphs. From the late Cretaceous period, around 70 million years ago, comes Antarctopelta, an ankylosaur. This type of armored dinosaur had bony plates covering its body for protection against predators. Antarctopelta is significant as it represents one of the few known ankylosaurs from the southern hemisphere. Marine reptiles also thrived in the waters around prehistoric Antarctica. Cronosaurus, from the early Cretaceous period about 110 million years ago, was a large pliosaur. It could reach lengths of up to 10 meters and had powerful jaws filled with large conical teeth, ideal for catching fish and other marine prey. Its presence in Antarctic waters indicates the diversity of marine life during the Cretaceous. Another giant marine predator from the late Cretaceous, around 70 to 66 million years ago, is Mosasaurus. Reaching lengths of up to 15 meters, Mosasaurus had a long, streamlined body and paddle-like limbs, making it an efficient swimmer. These top predators fed on fish, ammonites, and even other marine reptiles. Fossil evidence suggests that primitive mammals once inhabited Antarctica during the Paleogene period, about 66 to 23 million years ago. These early mammals were likely small, insectivorous creatures that lived during the warm periods of the Paleogene. They provide critical insights into the evolution and spread of mammals in the Southern Hemisphere. Ancient amphibians and fish also populated the prehistoric waters and wetlands of Antarctica. Temnospondyl amphibians, which lived from the Permian to the early Triassic period about 299 to 201 million years ago, were large amphibians that thrived in freshwater environments. Some species could grow quite large, resembling modern-day crocodiles in size and appearance. Their presence in Antarctica indicates that the continent had extensive wetland areas during these periods. Notosuchian crocodiliforms from the late Cretaceous period, about 100 to 66 million years ago, were a diverse group with varied diets and lifestyles. Some were terrestrial, while others were more aquatic. Their fossils in Antarctica show that these reptiles were widespread and adapted to different environments. The discovery of these prehistoric animals in Antarctica is significant for several reasons. These fossils provide evidence that Antarctica once had a much warmer climate, with forests and a rich biodiversity. The distribution of similar species across different continents supports the theory of continental drift and plate tectonics. Additionally, Antarctic fossils help scientists understand the evolutionary pathways of various species, including how they adapted to changing climates and environments. Imagine a time when Antarctica wasn't the icy wilderness we know today, but a temperate land brimming with life. During the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras, Antarctica was part of the supercontinent Gondwana, which also included Africa, South America, Australia, and India. This ancient land was warm, lush, and could have supported not only diverse flora and fauna, but also early human or pre-human ancestors. The idea isn't as far-fetched as it seems. 
Just as early humans migrated to new territories as climates and environments changed, it's possible that they ventured to and settled in Antarctica during these hospitable periods. Discoveries of artifacts from early human civilizations in unexpected places like the Arctic, Siberia, and remote Pacific Islands suggest that early humans were capable of long-distance travel, potentially even to Antarctica. If they did, we might someday uncover stone tools, cave paintings, or other cultural artifacts buried under the ice, providing unprecedented insights into the spread and adaptability of early human populations. The Piri Race map, a 16th century map drawn by Ottoman Admiral Piri Race, adds an intriguing twist to the story. This map depicts parts of the world with remarkable accuracy, including a section that some believe shows the northern coast of Antarctica free of ice. Critics argue that this depiction is based on earlier maps from lost civilizations or ancient mariners who had knowledge of Antarctica before it was covered in ice. If the Piri Race map indeed shows an ice-free Antarctica, it suggests that advanced civilizations existed with the capability to explore and map distant lands long before modern technology. This could imply the presence of ancient ruins or artifacts beneath the ice, perhaps even remnants of the fabled Atlantis. The philosopher Plato described Atlantis as a powerful and advanced civilization that sank into the ocean around 9,000 years before his time. Some theorists propose that Antarctica could be the location of this lost civilization, based on geological and historical interpretations of ancient texts. If Atlantis or a similar advanced civilization existed in Antarctica, there could be ruins of cities, temples and other structures buried under the ice, revolutionizing our understanding of human history and ancient technologies. Antarctica's harsh, cold and dry conditions combined with its vast ice sheets make it an ideal place for preserving meteorites. These space rocks, protected from weathering and erosion, can remain relatively intact for millions of years. Deeper ice layers could hide meteorites from significant impact events that have not yet been discovered. Finding such meteorites would provide valuable information about the early solar system and the history of impacts on Earth. Some speculative theories even suggest that ancient extraterrestrial visitors might have left artifacts or crashed spacecraft in remote regions like Antarctica. Proponents of these theories often cite unexplained anomalies in satellite images and ancient myths about sky gods and celestial visitors. If any extraterrestrial artifacts or spacecraft are buried under the ice, they could provide evidence of ancient contact with other civilizations and potentially revolutionary technologies. Fossils of ancient forests dating back to the Permian and Cretaceous periods have been found in Antarctica, indicating it was once covered in lush vegetation. These fossils include tree trunks, leaves, and even entire stumps preserved by volcanic ash and other sedimentary processes. More extensive fossilized ecosystems, including complete forest floors and associated plant and animal life, could be buried deeper under the ice. These ecosystems would provide a detailed snapshot of prehistoric life and climate in Antarctica. Ice and sediment cores drilled from Antarctic ice sheets have revealed pollen and spores from ancient plants, supporting the idea that Antarctica was once a green continent with diverse plant life, including ferns, conifers and flowering plants. By analyzing these cores, scientists can reconstruct past climates and understand how Antarctica transitioned from a warm, forested region to the icy desert it is today. This research is crucial for understanding global climate change and the resilience of ecosystems to extreme shifts in temperature. One more fascinating conspiracy theory about Antarctica is the idea that it harbors an entrance to the hollow Earth. This theory suggests that there are massive subterranean spaces beneath the Earth's surface, possibly inhabited by advanced civilizations, unknown species, or ancient beings. Antarctica is believed by some to conceal one of the main entrances to this hidden world. Proponents of the Hollow Earth theory often cite historical accounts, such as those from Admiral Richard E. Byrd, a highly decorated American naval officer and explorer. During his 1947 expedition to the North Pole, Byrd allegedly claimed to have flown into a mysterious opening in the Earth's crust, discovering a lush green land inhabited by strange and advanced beings. Though these accounts are largely dismissed by mainstream historians and considered apocryphal, they have nonetheless become a cornerstone for Hollow Earth enthusiasts. Further fueling this theory are various satellite images and photographs that some claim show large, unexplained openings in the Antarctic ice. 
These anomalies are often interpreted as entrances to the subterranean world. Additionally, some believe that certain unexplained seismic activities and unusual magnetic readings detected in Antarctica could be linked to these underground cavities.